So after watching The Turning and being so fucking pissed off by that movie, I went and saw The Gentleman, um, which I was like, this has to be a fucking upgrade. Please let this be an upgrade. Uh, this is a movie I've actually been looking forward to. I hope this is good. Uh, it's the new, if you don't know what The Gentleman is, it's the new Guy Ritchie film, uh, gangster comedy. Uh, that a genre that Guy Ritchie is well known for. And uh, I from the trailers, like, was sold on it. I was like, all right, Guy Ritchie back to making what he is famous for. And it's got Matt McConaughey, Henry Golding. It's got Hugh Grant, uh, Charlie, Dun uh, Charlie Hunnam, um, a bunch of fucking great actors. I'm like, God damn, this looks really cool. Like, it looks like a lot of fun. Uh, a, a fun gangster movie, you know, in the style, like I said, of uh, Guy Ritchie and him doing what he does best, and that's these kinds of movies. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, this might come as a shock to everybody. It was a fucking huge improvement over the turning. Yeah, the gentleman was good, very fucking good. Um, and I highly recommend it way o much over fucking the turning. Trust me, I do. I don't think that should be a shock to anybody. Uh, like I said, gentlemen, I really ha give a high praise. I really fucking enjoyed this movie. This is honestly my favorite movie of the year so far. Um, you know, it beat out fucking Bad Boys. I mean, Bad Boys was the best film of the year so far. Yeah, last week. No, now that's not the case. Uh, I love the I love the gentleman. This movie is fucking awesome. Um, the cast of this movie is amazing. Uh, Matt McConaughey is great as this, uh, as you see in the trailer, he's a drug kingpin who, uh, deals in pot. Uh, I don't think that's very far-fetched for fucking Matt McConaughey because, I mean, he's a pretty well-known pothead. Uh, but, I mean, I know he doesn't deal pot, I know that, but I'm just saying, it's not really far-fetched for Matt McConaughey. Um, I'm surprised he wasn't smoking. He probably spent probably half the movie sm smoking marijuana. I wouldn't doubt it. Uh, but he's awesome in this movie. I love Matt McConaughey. Uh, I'm still whatever the fuck they call the McConaissance. Uh, he is awesome in this movie he's, where he's just playing cool, casual Matt McConaughey, almost like he is in those fucking dumbass Lincoln commercials where he's just very cool, laid back, and you know, for a lot of the movie. But then, in a, like, uh, at a switch of a fucking dime, he'll fucking go crazy and kill, murder a lot of fucking people. He's awesome. When he needs to be sinister and scary, he is scary as shit in this movie. Like, there's some really intense scenes of him in this movie. Uh, and they're really well done. I really fucking enjoyed him in this movie. Uh, I really, one of my favorite performances of this movie was um, Hugh Grant. Hugh Grant, I'm so happy to see him in, like, another something else again uh, being awesome. He is, like, this uh, reporter who's blackmailing uh, Matt McConaughey and Charlie, uh, du Charlie Hunnam, he has his name. Uh, he, what you see in the trailer where he goes to Charlie Hunnam's house and uh, he starts telling him a story. That's the whole movie where he, it's basically him retelling the story of Bat McConaughey and all of events of this movie to him and what he thinks is what, trying to fill in the pieces of what he does and what he doesn't know. Um, and trying to blackmail Matt McConaughey and Charlie Hunnam at the same time. Uh, and he's this reporter for this newspaper is run by Eddie Marsden. Uh, who Eddie Marsden was, uh, uh, has a grudge against Matt McConaughey for not shaking his hand at a party and not making that up. So he has, like, this grudge and wants to fucking take him down for it. Uh, and, uh, it's, uh, like I said, the whole movie is told through Hugh Grant, and, like, they keep cutting to him and Charlie Hunnam, like, having these this conversation about the events of this movie, and, uh, it's pretty fun. Like, that, that was some of the best parts of this movie were the interactions between Charlie Hunnam and, uh, Hugh Grant. Hugh Grant is awesome. It's awesome to see him be a little over the top again. Like, I know the last movie I probably saw him in was Paddington 2, and he was awesome in that. Uh... I know you got a lot of praise for that. He was great in that, and he's great in this. Uh, I would love to see a Hugh Grant comeback, man. It's like, I'm hoping that happens. 
Um, Charlie Hunnam is really fucking good. Like, that, I think him, Matt McConaughey, and Hugh Grant, like, were the three big main actors of this thing. And he, this is probably the best movie I've seen him in. Um, I never watched Son of, Sons of Anarchy, but he uh, is, like, Matt McConaughey's right-hand man, uh, who is kind of his hitman, almost, uh, who, you know, does Matt McConaughey's bidding whenever he needs him to do something, do any dirty work or anything like that. Uh, and, uh, he's awesome. Henry Golding, uh, Henry Golding was another standout too, because he usually plays the charming Prince charming kind of character. You see in a lot of romantic comedies where, where he plays those kinds of characters, but in this one, he is a little playing a little different of a character where he is like this kind of sinister, seedy mob boss or uh, drug lord uh, who, or a guy, he's like under, he's basically Charlie Hunnam's character's uh, role in, in that he deals with heroin instead of pot. And deals with this Chinese drug lord uh, instead of Matt McConaughey, but he wants to try to take over Matt McConaughey's business, uh, and Matt McConaughey turns him down, and so he holds a grudge against him. And he's he's fucking awesome in this movie. It's like it's different to see him playing like a schemy dude. It was kind of fun to watch. Uh, I was like really enjoyed him in this movie. Um, Guy Ritchie. God damn, man. He knows how to write dialogue. He writes some really funny fucking scenes. Like, he has some really good... Inf he knows how to write dialogue, write funny dialogue, uh, write funny scenes. Like, god damn, like... It, he's like... What game... He's almost... Has... He he almost is like close... About as close to Quentin Tarantino as I've ever seen a director come close. And that, like... He... Is really fucking good at writing dialogue, really funny dialogue, but he has a knack for making gangster movies, and that's what he's best at doing. While you know, Quentin Tarantino will do all kinds of movies like westerns and stuff like that. Diane Ritchie is best at doing gangster movies. Even though I did like the Sherlock Holmes movies, I thought they were pretty fun. Uh, Guy Ritchie, though, like it's this is a movie that reminded me again of why Guy Ritchie is awesome. Uh, and I really fucking enjoyed, like, there's, there's, there's multiple times I laughed and fuck a lot in this movie. Uh, and he could also have some really fucking intense scenes, especially a lot of scenes with Matt McConaughey. That scene of, uh, Matt McConaughey and Henry Golding is pretty fucking good. They see in the trailer, uh, it's really fucking good. Uh, I was, like, really shocked how this movie began because it opens up where Matt McConaughey goes to an English pub and then apparently gets shot in the head and you're like, it cuts away, so you, like it's supposed to be a mystery. I'm like, did they just fucking spoil like the ending of this movie? What the hell? I was like, that was weird. I was like, I was taken aback by that. And then like, it cuts to like Charlie Hunnam and Hugh Grant. And I'm like, did that happen already, or does this it, it, not give it? I was like, is this like taking place before this happened? I'm like, I'm not sure. What the hell? Or after this happened? I don't know. I was like, this is bugging the hell out of me. Um, because I was like, expecting like, say, six months earlier or something like that, but it didn't do that. I was hoping it wouldn't because that's a cliche I can't stand, but luckily it didn't. Um, I fucking, um, I love one of my favorite parts. Poor Eddie Marsden. <laughs> Probably one of the biggest laughs I had in this movie is what happens to Eddie Marston and that fucking pig. That was a, f that was aw that was awful. This movie has a lot. Of, this movie has some juvenile hum humor, and that is probably one of the most juvenile humor things I've seen in a movie in a while. But I still laugh my ass off at that. That was pretty fucking funny. Um, I was trying to think of another fucking funny scene. Uh, man, it's like I said, it's been a long night. You gotta give me a. It's been a long couple of days. God damn, this movie's really funny. I really enjoyed the hell out of it. Uh, it could be one of those movies like you have to almost have sometimes uh, feel like a pie chart to keep a track of who's who. And like, there's like 
five million twist at the end. If you are not paying attention, you'll be very fucking confused, especially towards the last half of this movie, because there's like, like I said, five million twists going on. But you think something is uh, going, something, something, what or one thing's going on, another thing is going on, and yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like it's one of those kinds of movies. It's like. It has, like, an ending that's almost, like, a lot of twists that, like, you almost see in, like, Sherlock Holmes, like, the Guy Ritchie Sherlock Holmes movies where, like, it just, like, goes into overload and you need a fucking pie chart sometimes. And, although those movies got a little bit more ridiculous. Um, I'm trying to explain what was going on, but that was the fun of those movies. Uh, I lo- like I said, I love this movie. Uh, also... I loved seeing Jeremy Strong in this movie. Uh, Jeremy Strong from Succession. Huge fan of that show, Succession. I love that show. And uh, he's really good on that. And I'm really glad to see him in more mainstream movies. And this is like the this is the better Jeremy Strong, Matt McConaughey movie than uh, Serenity. Uh, the other movie I saw of them with them together with Serenity, and this is a way better fucking movie, even though I love Serenity, for all the wrong reasons, I still want, but, this is a way better movie, (laughs) this is a way better movie, uh, I do like it, like I said, I like this movie a lot, I had a lot of fun, I highly recommend it, uh, go see this, not turning, please love of God, uh, support movies like this, you know, don't support movies like The Turning, yeah, if you, and if you haven't seen stuff like, I watch a double feature this and uh, Bad Boys for Life, both the best movies of 2020, best movies of the decade so far. Um, I'm sure that won't last long. Uh, trailers, uh, the woman in the window. Uh, this was a trailer that I was like, okay, so it's Amy Adams, um, who again is one of the best actresses out there. Who just give this woman an Oscar already? Like, goddamn man! Like, she's working her ass off to get that Oscar, and she still hasn't gotten it yet. I'm sure it'll happen one day. But, um, she is this woman who's agoraphobic who is st- like stays in her house and kind of just spies on people in her windows. Like, it, it was like a, I'm sitting there like, okay, so this is Rear Window, like a remake of Rear Window, but. It's about a woman who has agoraphobia and not par- she's not paralyzed. But no, you're in a wheelchair. No, it turns out uh, like she befriends the neighbor next door who's played by Julianne Moore, and they start a friendship. And one day she sees Julianne Moore get murdered, like in Rear Window. And I'm like, okay, so this is going exactly like you know one of those fucking one of those kinds of movies. But then. It throws a twist at you that no, this might be all going to her head because the husband comes and he has a wife, but it's not Julianne Moore. And you're like, okay, so is this all in her head? Is she crazy? I don't know. I was like, I'm kind of on board for this. So like, it looks pretty cool. I like. I, I was like, it kind of played with your expectations. Like, they think it's like a remake of Rear, Rear Window, but it's not. It is, but it isn't. At the same time, it's like, that's cool. I'm like, I'm on board for that. I know it's based off a book or whatever. All right, cool. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. It comes out like the summer, I think. And then, <sighs> Brahms the Boy 2. That's the trailer. That's the title. I'm not making that. Brahms the Boy 2. That, that just rolls right off the fucking tongue. So, yeah, i never seen The Boy. Uh, that horror movie that came out a few years ago. I heard interesting things about it. I know about the twist in it. What happens in a twist. But I'm like, so they're really making a sequel to... I thought this was going to be a like, direct-to-video sequel. But no, it's coming out in fucking theaters, apparently. It's got Katie Holmes, who has a son who's like fucking turning into a psychopath. So he decided to move him into the house that was from the first one. That's a fucking great idea. About knowing the history. Again, no, in today's culture, you can look that shit up online. It's like, uh, anyways, that doesn't make it fucking believable anymore. Like, you, you can easily look up a... A house's history online before you buy it, dumbasses. 
So, yeah, uh, he... They move in, find a doll, yada, yada, yada. There's, like, jump scares that made no sense in this trailer. Uh, like, T. Holmes stares at the doll, and then there's a screaming noise. I'm like, she screams. I'm like, what the fuck would she... she what? I don't get what just happened. Um, I don't know. I Fuck this movie. It's like, God, it's just another sign of, like... Uh, State of Horror Movies in 2020. We're getting a sequel to this movie. Um, yay. Uh, and it's directed by the guy who made it, Devil Inside. Apparently he made the first one. I didn't realize he made the first one. But like, so that guy's still got making, making movies. Oh, yay. Uh, fuck me. So, yeah. The devil, so, yeah, that's as far as trailers. Oh, we got this week. Uh, Gretel and Hansel. And, oh, fuck, the rhythm section. Thank God that fucking movie's coming out. <laughs> I, I'll talk about that more when we get in the review of that, but, fuck, it's not going to be a better week, I don't think, next week. So, that's just, that's what I got planned for this weekend. I'll try to maybe see some of the Oscar-nominated movies. I've kind of gotten distracted. I don't know if I'll be able to fit them all in, I guess, now. Because it's like, I'm cutting it close, but we'll see. Until then, I'll talk to you guys later.